video is based on one of the um, my followers who has asked me about uh, non-equivalence. Uh, her name is Jinan Al Khalaf, um, or Khalaf. Um, uh, Jinan wants to know about um, uh, the non-equivalence um, as um, some sort of a trend uh, in uh, translation theory, and of course. Uh, uh, equivalence and non-equivalence is quite controversial. This is very the argument and the counter-argument here going on about um, uh, uh, whether to focus on equivalence or whether there is no equivalence, as it were. Um, these are the, the two different um, approaches, if you like, uh, to uh, translation theory. Um, there are quite a few scholars who support or are in favor of or pro-equivalence, um, whereas there are others who are anti-equivalence or they are uh, con or they are they, they're taking the other uh, school of not accepting equivalence uh, in translation theory. Um, I'm going to give very very brief um, uh, idea about uh, these two different schools if you like, the equivalence schools and the non-equivalence schools um, of uh, uh, translation theory, um, just for you to be aware of and uh, to be, um, you know, um, uh, to know about. Um, I have a little, little here. Um, let's have a look at them. Now, of course, here, as you can see, uh, in the equivalence, there is what's called equivalence or non-equivalence. And in this particular one, of course, we have scholars who are supporting or in favor of the concept uh, of equivalence, uh, which is uh, the fundamental basis of translation theory in some, uh, for some people, some of the... And then there are others who are, uh, other scholars who are, who are vocal and they, they, they say that they want to deny that concept of um, equivalence. They don't want to know about it. Uh, but they don't think that it is actually fundamental in, in when you are actually uh, uh, dealing with translation. Now, equivalence as an important concept in translation theory. There are some um, uh, scholars such as Jacobson or Jacobson, uh, uh, this scholar uh, who, has, um, uh, who has written in 1966 about the significance of uh, equivalence indifference. There is another scholar who is neither 1964 and there's also 1969 uh, with uh, Tabor uh, where they have talked about uh, different kinds of equivalence. We know that there is the formal equivalence which is uh, to do with a form uh, and it means shekli formal uh, and not means rasmi here um, if you are looking at the Arabic version of it. So there is a formal equivalence and the dynamic equivalence, or uh, sometimes they call it uh, the functional equivalence. And this is what NIDA in 1964 is talking about. There's also Catford, uh, 1965, who is in favor of equivalence, and of course House or House, Julian House, uh, 1970 and 1997 and 2016 where she talks that about uh, equivalence being very, very important uh, element. Um, so she, she gives, gives it um, as, as, as a, an important uh, concept in uh, translation. Uh, Newbert, uh, 1970 and uh, 1985, and uh, Pym, 1995, and Kohler, 1995 and uh, two, 2011. Now, when we come to the other group, of uh, uh, non-equivalence uh, scholars, we have scholars who are s saying that equivalence is not really necessary, it's unnecessary now, it's no longer needed, uh, it's not that important, and such as uh, these are in favor of this uh, concept are Hatem and Mason in 1990 and Rees and Vermeer in 1984. Of course, Ries and Vermeer are, are, are talking about what's called scopus <coughs> and the purpose of translation, uh, which is more important. The focus is 
on the functional uh, side or uh, functionalist side, uh, including, of course, um, Nord, Christine Nord as well, was actually in favor um, of um, the functional or functionalist approach to uh, uh, translation, where they are actually looking at um, the, um, uh, the scopus, the purpose of the translation, the audience, um, uh, uh, very important, um, and, and the environment there, um, uh, what's called extra textual uh, features and the intra textual features uh, with, of Nord. Then, then we have um, a complete rejection of the equivalence. Uh, the concept of equivalence by Vermeer 1984. And of course, Snell Hornby again, uh, this is 1988, where she's in favor of uh, non equivalence as a, as, a, as a concept. And then uh, Brunch uh, 2007, or Brunch uh, in 2007, who are um, uh, in favor of non equivalence, uh, i.e., they think it's not necessary or they reject it totally. There's also a denial of the value of equivalence, and sometimes considered uh, that if equivalence, it's considered as being very subjective when you are evaluating it. And that is by Monday, 19, uh, 2012, on page 77, and also on page 68, which where he um, uh, suggests that it is to be considered subjective when you are evaluating it by an analyst. Um, um, and that is, and then finally, finally, is the equivalence which is denied uh, in any kind of uh, legitimate position or status um, in translation theory, and that is by Baker in 2011 on page 5. Uh, I have just sort of given you a really a very, very snappy and very quick uh, summary of uh, the equivalence, uh, which I hope that it will uh, give you an idea into how you will consider or how you look at um, equivalence or non-equivalence according to some scholars. Of course, each one of them, if you look at their books, and I've given you the dates of these books, um, if you look at them, you will see how they approach equivalence, whether they think that equivalence is important or unnecessary, or to be, uh, they reject it completely or deny it completely. And most of them who are denying it almost um, uh, completely uh, are those who are in um, uh, the school of functionalist uh, approaches, where, like Vermeer and um, uh, and 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 uh, and and uh, Collar and, uh, and not, uh, Vermeer and uh, Rees and um, Nord, where they are focusing more on the uh, scopus and the purpose of translation. Uh, as, uh, as being more important and the audience and uh, the environment, if you like, or the extra intra uh, textual uh, features of the text itself. Um, there is also, I mean, I, I, I remember the, uh, that there is also this thing, uh, but, but of course, Hauser, who is, who is uh, uh, in favor of uh, the pragmatic uh, fun functional equivalence, she, she's very much into that. Uh, as well, and she is, but she's in favor of the equivalence uh, in a way as a value, um, the value um, as a equal in value, the, what she calls it equal in value in this particular um, um, uh, example here. So she call, uh, compares them in value that they are equivalent and not really as, a, as, as the others, other scholars have actually looked at it. I hope that you've benefited a little bit uh, for this is for Jinan. Al Khalaf, um, who has actually written to me or, or sent me a comment only about seven hours ago or eight hours ago, and I thought I'd, I'd better share with you some of this uh, useful uh, information about the two schools: uh, the one that is pro um, equivalence and the other one which is con equivalence. Have a nice day.